Welcome back to GHL Pro. This is Jason Edwards. We're without Juanita today doing a solo show, but I'm here with a high-level and AI-building bot expert, Charles Guerra. Thanks I'm, for coming on today. I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So we're going to get into uh, a lot of things that we love about high-level, some things maybe we don't love about high-level. We're also going to talk about uh, bots, because I, I know you've been going really deep with mm -hmm. building bots, not only the traditional way through high level, but also through one of our favorite companies, Closebot. So we'll talk a bit about that. You guys are doing a ton of really cool bot builds. So uh, first of all, I guess we should just get into how did you discover high level? What what uh, brought you into that world? So I have been part of our using high level for the last eight months to a year. Um, I actually got brought into Go High Level by uh, my current business partner Jeff Lopez. Um, I was previously in the life insurance industry doing sales. Okay. Um, I was on a great path and I was presented with an opportunity to get into marketing, get into Go High Level and went to the actual Go High Level event in Dallas. And they were speaking about conversational AI and it like changed my life. Absolutely changed my life. And I just saw an opportunity, took it. And now we're going on the path of building bots for so many different businesses using Closebot uh, and just trying a bunch of different crazy things with AI because it's just like we're on the forefront of AI. So it's been absolutely insane. Yeah, I've been really dabbling into when ChatGPT came out. But even prior to that, I was doing a lot of image generation with MidJourney. And then now to see the advancement so rapidly with the chatbots and how conversational it truly is, mm -hmm. is crazy. Did you have any tech experience in your previous career? I had a little bit, um, obviously I'm a little tech savvy being a little bit younger. I'm 22 and I obviously grew up using ChatGPT and high school kind of rolling into going and potentially going into college. So I messed with it, but not to the extent of, you know, building it out for a complete business. Um, and thankfully we ran into closed bot like very, very early in my career. Obviously Jeff's been in the industry for a lot longer, but for me getting into it, meeting close bot, being able to meet Bryce in person and actually have him like break it down was so simple. So plug and play that you didn't even need to do any of the crazy back end stuff. It's like really, beginner friendly, you just prompt a bot back in automations on go ahead level and then you're good to go. You could have a bot set up within 30 minutes. Yeah, I wanted to go through the exercise of actually building mm -hmm. a bot from scratch or at least as from scratch as I could. And I went through that whole process, probably took me four hours mm -hmm. to like do it through Zapier and, and ChatGPT token codes and stuff that is even beyond my knowledge. And I wanted to do that. And then at the end, it didn't actually work. Yeah. And then I saw a closed bot. I said, let me give this a shot. And literally, like you said, probably within 30 minutes, I had something that was working. And obviously, you can go in and refine it yeah. and make it better to your needs. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you remember on the show, we've talked about closed bot a bunch with mm -hmm. the fact that it just gives you task-based um, agenda. So you want step one, ask for the name. Step two, ask for uh, what kind of service they're looking for. Step three, you can really program it to go along a journey, whatever specific to you as a business owner. Absolutely. Um, and it just works perfectly. Yeah, no. And one of the things that I auto, like automatically understood as soon as I, as soon as I built, built my first bot, I knew every business needs a bot. Every business can have a bot. It's so important for AI, for you to implement AI into your business like now, because if you don't, you're going to get left behind because the business down the street is probably using AI at this point and you're not, and they have the speed to lead. They have that advantage over you. And what I think it's like, there's some stats about like maybe three to five minutes if you reach yeah. out to a business and they don't get back to you, you're gonna go to the next business. Well, think about it as, you know, I have a plumbing leak, my water's pouring out of my wall, right? So I'm picking up the phone, I'm calling plumber A, he doesn't answer. I'm not gonna go, you know, wait for him to call me back. Yeah. Water's pouring out of my ceiling. I'm Go going to number, number two. Absolutely. But if a chat bot was engaging me, asking me questions, oh no, oh no, I can't believe you have a leak. Tell me what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then relaying that to somebody at the office and just feeling like th that person's getting taken care of, mm -hmm. that sale is going to get converted. Absolutely. The speed to lead aspect and touch it one more time. It is so important to have that speed to lead. No matter if they're miscalled text back, we, I call it miscalled bot back at this point, miscalled bot back. Um, where miss a call instead of just having basic automations, which is used to be really great, we can have a full blown conversation. I'm so sorry, missed your call. What were you calling about? Engage in a full blown conversation. That's for building, book an appointment. That's the big thing is, you know, we've talked for a lot of time about how great miss call text back is. Yeah. But if the text back only stops there, exactly, and they say, okay, sorry, we missed your call. How can we help? And you say, I have a plumbing leak, and then you get nothing. Yep. 
then it really didn't do much more than capture the lead for you, but you didn't convert that lead. Mm -hmm. So bots have been a game changer for a lot of people that you've been implementing it for. 100%. Uh, can you give an example of, and we'll get into some deeper kind of nerdy stuff in a, in a moment, but mm -hmm. can you give an example of, of somebody that you've been building bots for that, um, a use case that they needed it for and how it's helping them? Oh, absolutely. One of my favorite use cases so far is being able to take prepaid appointments. Uh, and cr like creating prepaid appointments for, you know, some of our clients, majority of our clients were doing prepaid appointments. So lead comes into the form. We're automatically engaging in a conversation by we, I mean the bots. Um, I call it an AI assistant actually. So our AI assistant's engaging in a conversation from A to B, uh, sends a booking link, gets our prepaid appointment booked, um, and then on, on to, you know, scheduling their session or trial. We're seeing these at 11 p.m. at night, two in the morning. Yeah. 5 a.m., you know, all all random times throughout the day, um, being able to grab these prepaid appointments for these clients and them texting me, hey, my bot just booked another prepaid appointment yeah. for me. You know, I woke up to two or three prepaid appointments. So that for me has personally been like my favorite use case. We've scaled that um, with pretty much majority of our clients taking prepaid appointments just because previously it was, you know, they either go to the funnel, they don't prepay there. Okay, now we have to manually follow up. Right. Now we have the AI assistant, which is doing all the rapport building, asking the right questions based off of the data um, that we've taken from our previous clients or our clients. And now we're just kind of merging those two, creating this beautiful conversation rapport building that leads to a prepaid appointment, more book sessions, more bodies to the door, yeah. more potential to close higher ticket packages. So The big thing, and I see a lot of comments when people like a, you'll see an ad for an AI chat bot or something, and you'll see some of the comments below and mm -hmm. it'll say like, nobody wants to talk to a bot or mm -hmm. a banned bots or whatever. But really, it's just that nobody wants to talk to a bad bot, exactly. right? a, bad, a bot that doesn't solve their problem. And we've yeah, all experienced right. that phone tree type of thing. Like, mm -hmm. what did you say? Or you're, you're talking to a robot that's not understanding you, but, mm -hmm. or even the uh, press this for this and that for that. It's like very limited if mm -hmm. it's not solving your problem. But these are truly conversational. They're interacting. They're answering questions better than I probably could if I was on my best game. Yeah. To to add on top of that, that's a great, great point. We even have some of our clients that they ask the bot the question that the lead asked <laughs> to get a response to send to the client if, you know, if the, if the bot is off at the time because we turned the bot off for, you know, the separate reasons. If yeah. they have health conditions or things like that, we turn the bot off. We want to make sure that that client gets actually taken care of, not the bot couldn't handle it, but we want to make sure they get an engaging on the phone call, just send them a booking or right. a discovery call, right? So in that instance, you know, sometimes clients are asking specific questions and our our clients are, you know, stuck kind of, how do I respond to this? What would the bot say? Perfect. Let me just ask the bot and then send it back to the client. So super conversational, super friendly. You can even make it uh, change the tone of voice you want it. How conversational do you want? Do you want it to be really bubbly, send emojis? Do you want it to be stern and professional? Do you want it to be educated or mean? Like all of these things you can adapt and refine based off your industry, which I think is absolutely amazing. We've seen some really, really cool things like being super bubbly. We've seen like really a lots of emojis and like kind of you can tell this person is potentially being younger for, you know, med spas and things like that. Or for, you know, more educated, like real estate, we want to be more kind of educated and stern, have a professional kind of tone of voice, if that mm -hmm. makes any sense. So um, super, super cool to have that conversational aspect and not just, well, you know, I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah. The bot kind of panicking, which we've seen with other bots. So Yeah. yeah. So I know you do a lot for actual business owners, but this channel is primarily a lot of agency owners, mm -hmm. right? So can you talk a little bit about how you guys are going out and actually selling the bots and more importantly, or as importantly, selling them for the price that they're worth? Because I see a lot of people starting to undernut mm -hmm. each other and dropping the price down when this can truly replace, I don't like, I guess I shouldn't say that. I don't like the replacing of staff as much as I like reallocating staff to more important roles. Mm -hmm. So this can be the front end of a lot of businesses to capture that lead and then turn them over to somebody to give them a great experience exactly. as they come in the facility or online after they've signed up for something. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. I, I, the way I see it is qualifying and disqualifying. Yeah. Right. Cause you know, we're at the point right now where, it, you know, AI is absolutely great and it's going to obviously be more advanced as time goes on. But I think the purpose for AI currently is to qualify and disqualify, obviously book our appointments for qualified leads. 
because let's just say you have a hundred leads coming in, you know, every single day, how many can you actually target and actually have a full blown conversation with, you know, maybe a percentage of them, but we have a bot that works 24 seven, 365 days a week, doesn't take any bathroom breaks, doesn't go on vacation, isn't scrolling on TikTok whenever it has off time or whatever that looks like. Yeah. It's being able to actually consistently qualify and disqualify your leads. So it gives you the highest probability of closing higher ticket or, you know, bringing the best leads to you. Right. Um, and reallocating. Absolutely. Again, we are taking this time consuming manually, manual labor of texting, replying emails, you know, web chat replies, uh, Google My Business replies, anything native to go high level that you would typically have to handle can be all handled by the AI assistant. So it's absolutely amazing. I think if you're not, again, I'll say one more time, if you're not using it at this point, like you're going to get left behind. It's it's just a matter of time, whether that's a business owner or whether that's an agency. If you're not offering this to your current clients, they're going to find it somewhere else. I talk to clients all day, whether they're ours or not, um, coming from ads or referral base. We set up clients and they're telling, oh, my friend could probably use this. I talked to their friend and they have a marketing agency, but their marketing agency is not offering AI assistance. Why not? You, everybody should be offering this. It's going to help every single business owner at every stage from qualifying to nurturing. It, it's super, super important. Absolutely. Yeah. And for me, I'm definitely one that if there is a chat, I prefer to do that with any customer service versus picking up the phone and calling and mm-hmm. waiting on hold and that whole experience that we've all felt. So um, on the pricing side, though, as agencies going out, offering it to their clients, as important as, as that is, mm-hmm. Um, how are you seeing pricing scale and how are you how are you building in that value to people? Yeah, great question. So I think it's also very, very important to let's see price off your industry. If you're niched in an industry whose average ticket is only two hundred dollars and you try to sell somebody a ten thousand dollar bot bill, come on. You know, the value is not that's not it's not that it's not there, it's just in their eyes it's not there because they're only doing average ticket of two hundred dollars. Right. So we have to price based off of our niche. So if you're in a niche where, you know, for us per se, we're averaging average tickets around $3,000. If all this bot did was bring in one extra person a month and potentially help them close one extra deal a month on an average ticket of $3,000, five $10,000 bot builds is nothing, you know? So I think pricing it based off of, again, the industry and obviously your expertise, um, for what you're actually going to bring and what value you actually feel comfortable bringing. Right. Um, Because again, average ticket. (laughs) If all this did was bring one extra person a month and you have a set of fee and you're doing your monthly reoccurring, let's say monthly reoccurring is, you know, 197 on the back end just to manage the bot. And this bot is actively consistently talking to every single lead that comes in. We're doing database reactivations with the bot, outreach, whatever you're doing. This is bringing one person you're only paying one ninety seven a month, yeah. And you close a ticket of two thousand dollars. Is it worth it? Yeah, it's absolutely worth it. No, it's a no brainer offer, and it's you know if you think about it like logically, I think it's like point zero zero or something cents a message. Like, and overseas, we love our overseas t- staff. You know, they're absolutely great. But we could be utilizing again reallocating those team members to more important aspects of the business instead of doing outreach. We can have them, you know, building out our backend automations and creating systems and SOPs so we can streamline and scale our business. Yeah. I think this AI technology is only going to be beneficial to, to agencies, providing it to clients and to actual business owners. So again, and again, if you're not using it, please use it. <laughs> yeah. We've talked a lot about the perfect scenario, perfect storm of not only helping clients get leads through maybe you're using something like uh, we've talked about. um, uh, Why am I drawing a blank? Um, Upex. Mm -hmm. So Upex, we use Upex to to drive leads through Facebook ads and Google ads. Mm -hmm. But then if those leads have nowhere to go, then it falls short, right? So using Upex to drive the leads and then close bot to convert those leads Mm -hmm. and your client as the agency owner, your client is experiencing just leads delivered on a silver platter that are pre-qualified. Maybe they've even paid for the service. Mm -hmm. They've interacted with somebody on your team who was very friendly and polite and professional and knowledgeable. And it's just a phenomenal experience for that Mm -hmm. that consumer. 
Um, so I truly believe, as, as Charles is saying, uh, using these bots is something that every one of your clients is going to want to use at some point. Yep. They may be scared, nervous, whatever, just because their perception of what a bot is is not what it actually is with these new conversational um, AI chat bots. But do a demo for them. Show yep. them how it works. Show them the experience. Put them through your own funnel and say, did you realize that that wasn't um, somebody on my team that was actually our bot? And show them the experience and then you'll have a much easier sale. Yeah, and, and two things to feed off of that is, one, um, the expectation of AI. Again, as you kind of said, it's still new. It's very, very new. So if you're rolling this out and if you are an agency and you have you know X amount of clients and you're rolling this out, set proper expectations for people. And I'm going to throw a little bit of sauce for y'all. Um, if you're using ClosBot, there's certain tags you can use and triggers you can use. So for me personally, on our team, what we do is every new you know, client we onboard, we set up actual automations that go to my personal phone number and my team's personal phone number. So every single time a, one of our AI assistants is having a conversation, one of my team members or I'm personally there overviewing the conversation, and I let the, the client know, hey, for the first week, we're going to be tweaking. We're going to be checking all the conversations. So there's no need to worry if the bot wants to try to, you know, do something that it shouldn't be doing. We're going to be there because it is AI at the end of the it's day. It's so smart because it's so funny. Um, I find oftentimes business owners are are now comfortable outsourcing mm -hmm. to other countries and things, and they'll pay someone a fair wage in their country, $6 an hour, $4 an hour, whatever. Mm -hmm. But then they're like, okay, you do that and I'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. But with this new bot technology, because they're scared, they're like, I got to know everything that yep. this thing is saying. So I think you've accomplished mm -hmm. overcoming that objection by saying, we're going to oversee this 100%. until you're comfortable that this is running smoothly. Yeah, absolutely. And I, as soon as I let them know that, majority of the time, it's kind of like a, I do onboarding Zoom calls. So it's, you can see it in their facial expression, like, oh, you're going to, oh, you're, oh, okay, thank yeah. you. Okay, thank you. So again, because AI is new and I'm not one to, you know, tell people what to know, how to know. It's just, hey, let's just show you. Do the demo, set the proper expectations, and you'll have no problems. They're more than willing as soon as they see that first conversation happen and it's answering questions better than they would answer their questions with them, you know, hanging out with their family. As soon as that happens one time, yep, they're going to get stuck. It's going to get sticky, and we love sticky with agents. We love sticky clients because, again, we're providing something so valuable to them that they're able to sleep more, go to sleep earlier, spend more time with their family, do things outside of work and not work. What What's the thing? Um, not work for their business, work on their business. I mm. believe it would be called. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. In their, on their business instead of in their business. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly that. And then to kind of go back to, to that, like it's super funny that majority of the time clients are texting me and it's not even me, it's my bot <laughs> and they think it's me. Yeah. And so another kind of, segue or fallback I do if they're nervous or whatever that looks like I just let them know I'm like you weren't even talking to me for majority of our conversations that aren't even me so if you think it's going to be crazy or do something that's not supposed to just go back through our conversations and check our conversations yes it probably wasn't me once they see that this has solved that problem because how many times do they get a how much does this cost mm -hmm. or, or what are your fees or mm -hmm. uh, how long does this take or whatever, like of those things. And people don't want to even look through the frequently asked questions yep. on a website anymore. They want to ask somebody and get an answer. So this solves those problems. It's eliminating a lot. They're going to stick with you forever because they don't want to, I mean, there's no reason for them to go anywhere else. Absolutely. And again, to add on top of that great point that you brought up frequently asked questions, another little value tip ask your clients what their frequently asked questions are and just give that to your bot. Again, if you're using ClosBot, upload it to knowledge storage. We have videos on all that type of stuff and it's super simple. But if you just have your client list out their top 10 to 15 frequently asked questions, majority of the time, they're gonna, that question is going to get asked somewhere. That client is going to see, oh, the bot responded to that frequent. I, I hate that question. Yeah. They don't hate it, but yeah, I really... They've done it a lot. Of, it's like a... like. Um, somebody playing their greatest hits over and over and over again. Like, I'm tired of this song. Like, you need? Yeah. And yeah. so asking me about pricing, the bot handle it so good. So yeah. again, frequently asked questions are super important. Give that to the bot so the bot can answer those questions or AI system, excuse me. Um, that'll make your client very, very happy. That's a quick win that I always like to do because as soon as we turn on the bot, within, you know, a couple hours, we're already engaging in conversations. Within the first two, three days, we're I already got a bunch of basic frequently asked questions. Yeah. 
And if you are taking it to the, like if you work with a business owner that mm-hmm. can actually collect payments yep. um, prior to a service, like, I mean, how, like that's a client for life. If you say, hey, this thing made a sale for you for $5,000, you didn't even have to be there. Oh, like <laughs> it's it's the best thing ever. Whenever we set a client up who's like skeptical, we again, tell them, hey, we set all the expectations and they're still a little, you know, we're in that week trial Next day, I get a text at, you know, 5 a.m., 6 a.m. I just woke up and I saw that I have a prepaid appointment booked for today from the buy. And I'm like, I told you, you yeah. just, you know, have some faith. <laughs> so it's it's really cool to see. That's probably one of my favorite things is, one, being able to overview all the conversations. Um, and then, two, just having clients, like, actually, like, the belief. Like, it sets in that it's reality. Like, it's not fake. We're, they're not typical chat bots. They're, they're real conversational booking prepaid appointments for you without you having to pick up the phone, without an overseas paying thousands of dollars and all that stuff, being able to actually book these prepaid appointments completely, you know, almost, I was about to say free, but very low cost and low effort, right? And high level is only getting better. Closebot is definitely only getting better. We met uh, with Bryce here in your awesome office here. Uh, Bryce, the founder of of Closebot, he just has a a true passion for Mm -hmm. making that product great. And so I'm excited to see where that goes. Obviously, High Level has a bot built in that they're improving on too, but just Closebot, I feel, is so diverse and so um, ahead of where High Level is that uh, that's why we've chosen to use it. So um, how can, I know that you have been spending a lot of time actually building bots for people yep. through Closebot and integrating into High Level. Mm-hmm. Um, how can people work with you on that? And then I know you have a Facebook group and things you guys are launching too. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're interested in obviously utilizing Closebot and if you need information, um, we have a Facebook group that's called the AI Agency Guys, um, the AI Agency, excuse me. And it's basically going to be top top down from top, excuse me, top down, I guess. We'll just say it like that, whatever. Um, a full breakdown, how to build the bots, how to sell the bots more importantly, and actually how to be profitable with closed by and conversational AI. And again, be at the forefront of AI and conversational AI especially. Um, so I, I definitely recommend going there. We're going to be just giving as much value as possible, helping as much as we possibly can. I've done a lot of one-on-one calls and I think now transitioning and getting so many people asking kind of the frequently asked questions, I notice okay, we have to do a one to many. We got to help more people. There's so many questions and same questions. So we we need to get more people off the ground. Best way to do that is to you know have a, a community of people that are all helping each other. Um, so I would definitely check out the AI agency. And um, if you want to meet with me personally, reach out to me on Facebook, uh, Charles Guerra. But yeah, we'll put links to the group and to Charles's contact information and just everything you guys are doing. I'm really inspired by it. You guys have been interviewing a lot of people using Closebot. Um, so just leading the pack of how to set up these AI assistants, AI chatbots into various businesses. So I'm excited to see what you do and can't wait for the audience to uh, see, join your group and really learn that process too. Yeah. We're trying to make, help more people, help more people. I, yeah. that's, I love that. Right. So again, if we can help y'all help more business owners, save time, save money, that's also super, super important to me. Um, and we're not trying to sell, you know, hundred dollar bots. We want to sell what it's worth. We want to sell value, valuable things to, you know, business owners who actually understand it and it's important to them and they want to spend more time with their family and kids and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of the times I've seen you're really providing the value, but bots, bot builds for a business for 15,000, 30,000, you know, but, but it's well worth it. It's, it's handling, you know, they would have to hire multiple people in a position to handle what you're building for them. Even though technology is doing it, doesn't mean that it's not worth it. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm really inspired by what you guys are doing. Thanks for coming on the show. And of can't wait for people to check out the group. Thanks for having me. Very, very excited. And I look forward to speaking with anybody who comes our way and uh, helping you out, get you set up with your first bot. Awesome.